thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm looking forward to your presentation at the seventh annual Step Up Conference coming up on April 28th, which you're going to be co-presenting with my homegirl, Tammy Farber. So I'm so excited about that. So tell me a little bit about um, accountable leadership, which you're going to be doing in the afternoon session from two to four. So what is accountable leadership? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to being a part of the Step Up Conference um, and the fact that it's the seventh, you know, uh, seven is a is a great number. You know, it, it's a representation to some for completion and just the real woundedness of being able to show up and be who we are. And so when we think about accountable leadership, I think it first and foremost, I really don't think that we can talk about accountability without bringing Mia Mingus into the conversation. And when you when we talk about the way that she shows up, she has this quote where she says, true accountability is not only apologizing, understanding the impact of your actions have caused, it's understanding the impact your actions have caused on yourself and others, making amends or reparations to the harmed parties. But most importantly, true accountability is changing your behavior so that the harm, violence, abuse does not happen again. And uh, again, that's Mia Mingus, her blog, Leaving Evidence is like uh, forever go to for me. And when we talk about that, and I think the way that we think about accountability, a lot of times people say things like, oh, well, hold me accountable. Or, um, you know, uh, they ask you to be their accountability partner, which is okay. But I think really what's important when we think about accountable leadership is not to miss the part about leadership. And so being an accountable leader means that we recognize that, in fact, this is an accountability mirror. And we can ask someone when we ask our accountability partners, we want to ask them to hold up that mirror for us so that we can see ourselves and be able to see ourselves better to be able to show up as better leaders and better and most importantly, better people. Mm. And that is such a powerful statement on holding up the mirror, because sometimes when we ask people to hold us accountable and we hold that mirror up, they're like, ooh, let's not look at this mirror right now. Exactly. I don't like what I'm seeing. <laughs> Exactly. And deflection kicks in, shame kicks in, <laughs> you know what I mean? All the things that you're like, oh no, like if this is not what I intended at all, but you got to be grateful for when people are willing to hold that space with you, yes. they're taking on that emotional labor and they're going to walk in, alongside with you, but they don't need to take on the weight of assuming exactly. the responsibility of holding you accountable. Yes. Yes. I, you know, it's like a Growing up, I was my father would always tell me about my choices and my consequences. And, you know, he would be like, baby girl, you're going to be making a choice. A consequence may not come right away, but when it does, you better be ready to face it. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think about that breaks me think about uh, Lauren Hill when she's like, you know, baby girl, respect is just a minimum, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you just got to take that with you and just really, really embrace that, like, and and that you are human, you know, and, right. and what it looks like. So that's your, 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 your people was giving you some valuable life lessons that I'm sure has shown up in multiple ways and sometimes probably ways you didn't even expect, huh? And it's like, oh, do I have to deal with this right now? <laughs> right? <laughs> like I did not ask for... <laughs> Right. Exactly. Hold up. Hold up. Like, let me <laughs> let me catch my breath. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And, you know, you talk about, you know, being human that, you know, we all we all fall. Right. We all skip a step every once in a while. But yes. being able to have the grace when someone's like, girl, get up now. Right. It's like, listen, it's listen. Listen, and grace is such a, and grace is really yes. an overlooked thing. Like people really mm -hmm. take sometimes miss the opportunities that we have to show up for ourselves with grace. And one of the things that I've learned over the course of time is that the more grace that I'm able to give myself, um, the more I'm able to extend to others and kind of flipping that because sometimes, you know, that, that self-critic can be so tough. Um, and, and how you show up and uh, Brene Brown refers to like shame gremlins mm -hmm. and, um, and those things can really eat you alive. And, uh, it's so it's funny that you said this because I'm talking to my therapist today and we were just talking about how 
are that self-critic and how it can be so harmful and when we really take a moment to pause that we wouldn't talk to other people that way or if someone came to us for support or help or whatever the case may be oftentimes that grace that we're willing to extend to others we have to learn as adults how to turn that around and extend that same grace to ourselves because you're mm -hmm. right we're human and we make mistakes and mistakes are going to happen and uncertainty is going to happen and all of those things and perfectionism isn't real and blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so and so you exactly. got to remind, constantly remind yourself of that for sure absolutely absolutely so in your session what can the attendees expect well i think first and foremost people can expect um to leave the space with uh there, expect space for reflection um expect opportunities to have uh brave conversations and conversations that are really about who you are and how you show up as a person versus this we speak or this group think opportunities and i think more importantly um leaving with leaving with ways to be able to leaving with tangible tools and resources to be able to show up as the best person that they can possibly be um, one of the things that i that i say and that i re that that i pride myself on is that first of all i'm a full-time human um, part-time consultant and i know that my mission and vision in the world is to help people show up in the fullness of their humanity at work and in the world and in doing that um, just being able to show up as who you are and allowing for yourself to have those moments of grace but to have those opportunities where mistakes are made but then how you're able to correct and and adjust um as the great prophet uh cardi b says you know what i'm saying i might get knocked down nine but i'm gonna get up ten and <laughs> that's really what accountability accountable leadership is all about and so i think that people are going to get um tangible tools some storytelling and some space to to really kind of um work on their muscle memory as they're as they're working on maybe some things that are uncomfortable and things that maybe they're not so much of an expert in or not even their uh, normal leadership process right right you know it's i always think about that the most important conversation you're going to have in the day is the one that's you have in the mirror right is that that's where it starts I mean, you know what I mean? Because how you talk to yourself really does change how you experience mm -hmm. the world. And so exactly. it's beyond the, you know, it's beyond just, you know, the affirmations and different things of that nature, but it's the, it's the, it's the practice. And that's what I think people, people miss when they think about accountability. It's all what they, they want to go out and they want to do all of these things, right. but they're, they're forgetting the, the moments of reflection and the opportunities that they have to take in and and find ways to to reconcile with the behaviors in which they want to change but that awareness is key and starting with that awareness is going to is going to get us far oh absolutely self-awareness the self-regulation right it's like that is that's something that is so important because you know i i found myself before especially in the beginning journeys of um you know racial equity I, born and raised in hawaii I never had to think about, you know, how I navigated the world. And then moving to the state, I'm like, whoa, this is really different. Yeah. I'm put into this racialized body where all of a sudden I'm not a Pacific Islander, Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian individual. I'm a brown person. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Do you all know who my ancestors right. are? Because it's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. the, way, the labels and like you gotta you gotta be able to find a way to separate who you are versus who the world is projecting you to be and what other people's perceptions and how that then can shape the ways in which you show up and all of that matters because a lot of times people you know i mean even yeah i mean especially when you're thinking about racial eth ethnicity and different things of that nature and how really in the in the states and western culture all of that is conflated and there there right. is a whole lot of space you know what i mean i think about you know how asian and pacific islander um heritage month and it's like okay if you don't say the and it's a totally different month <laughs> and and how important those details become when you're moving in these spaces and and to be racialized in ways that 
maybe you didn't grow up with or maybe that that culture shock is is really an experience i would imagine Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, our socialization plays into how we think about ourselves, how we view other people. And so, you know, it's like that accountability piece, that leadership piece is so important, especially if we're going to be um, running organizations and we're working with other people, right? It's like, it's, it's hard. Sometimes it can be really hard, but I always say that it's hard work. The hard work is the hard work. Yeah. That when we come from this place of heart is when we can actually adapt and you know acknowledge that we come from this place of difference. And difference doesn't make us one better or one you know less. It just makes us different, which yeah. gives us a broader perspective of who we are as human beings. Correct. And if we really embrace, if we're truly embracing difference, then we'll take an opportunity to allow for curiosity to uh, to flourish. And that then creates creativity and innovation Ooh. for the openness and the different things that uh, ultimately lead to our expansion as mm-hmm. a, for all of humanity. And so all of those things are really important, um, but they don't come easy and they don't come with without uh, sometimes without struggle. And so we got to be willing to embrace that uncertainty as we're moving through these spaces and places for sure. Exactly. Exactly. And I love that you talked about curiosity, right? It's like leaning into inquiry. And when we are curious, we can actually, um, tap into that creative part of ourselves. We are able to reimagine, radically reimagine what our future looks like. We have the improvisation and the play that comes with the creativity. There's just, there's like so much that we could do. Yeah, yeah. And when you say, and whenever I hear somebody say radical, I mean, we really got to understand that what we're meaning when we say radical is really getting to the root of something (laughs) to be able to understand at the core of the existence. And so sometimes people like to to turn radical into a bad word, but it's not. It's really, and and it's about the context in which we're, which we're, which we're using it. And that's where that thing like that awareness and that alignment and understanding of, and first of all, awareness of self and then awareness of our surroundings and how that shows up for us. So that's, yeah, that's beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my question is, what is the single most important message you want to convey to your audience to help move racial equity forward? Yeah, I think if we, if we really get down to the, if I can sum it up, is that accountability is personal, responsibility is organizational, and mindfulness is universal. Yes. Yes. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Miller, I am really looking forward to having you and Tammy Farber um, at the seventh annual Step Up Conference on April 28th from two to four. This is going to be amazing. And if, if there is anyone that is wanting to learn what it's like to be a leader, what it's like to have true accountability, go to Miller and Tammy Farmer session because it's going to be the bomb. I can yeah. feel it already. Yes, come on, bring the energy, bring the insight. <laughs> Even though we'll be the presenters, we're looking to, we're really looking to co-create a learning space with everyone. So come in and 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 help us learn with us. You know what I mean? One of the things that we always say at the Miller Consultant Group is let's grow together. And that's really how we're how we believe that we're going to be able to advance this work is by being willing to step up and grow together. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And we look forward to seeing you on April 28th. You're very welcome. And again, my name is Miller. My pronouns are he, him. And I'm really looking forward to connecting with everyone at the Step Up Conference. Take care. Thank you.